Hello, sir. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. So, sir, I let's start with the questions directly. Sure. Uh, you be uh, you were taught in Chinmay Vidyalaya. So, in a in a interview, you said that you were privileged to learn teachings from them. So, what did they teach you? So, like you are so proud about it. What did you learn from them? So, um. You know, there were um, lessons on spirituality at a very early age. Um, so some of the things that I learned, I mean, even the way, you know, Swami Chinmayananda would talk about um, Bhagavad Gita. It was interpreted in a very philosophical way rather than, uh, you know, it being a very uh, mythological characters and gods and goddesses sort of a way. So, and very, very early in life, I got an insight to do philosophy and Vedanta and other things because it was all available. It was like whoever wants to take it, they can, they can access it. It's, it was like that. So, it, it gave a very different sort of a background for, for me. Uh, and that, that too, when you're in the school, it is not very common. Um, for example, you know, uh, one of the things that we learned uh, from the way Gita was interpreted was that, you know, instead of, you know, you, you always wonder thousand, a hundred Kauravas fighting five Pandavas. And, uh, you know, it's, it's quite unreal that, you know, hundred kids one person has. It is impossible, right? So, you know, it was taught, told to us that, you know, it is a fight in our mind. When we have you know, there are thousand, there are hundred uh, negative values that are fighting those five positive things. And five positive values are created through our senses, all five senses. So you absorb, uh, you know, you, you see, you hear, you feel. So your senses create those values in you. And those values, how they have that constant fight within your mind and conquer and, you know, then your, you know, the the values reinstated and you kind of go ahead and take an action. So for every uh, action, you have this fight going on in your mind. And somewhere you get polarized and pulled by uh, various negative thoughts. But it depends on how you, re, you know, stick to your values and you kind of make your judgment. So this is a very different interpretation of the Mahabharata story and the Kurukshetra Yudha, the war of so it's not about, you know, these people, those bad people versus, you know, it, it, it has such a metaphorical thing. So we were, we got access to such sort of a thing, which was all, always made you want to think and more than the surface value. You know, what you see in the surface is a different thing and what you interpret is very different. So that kind of learning was really valuable for me. So, uh, and early in life, when you get such access to such information, it kind of goes really long way. That's very really nice. So you got spiritual en enlightenment? No, from no, 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 what, okay. no, what enlightenment in the whole way. No, one, is a, one is a student in that level. So, you know, you get your curiosities are, uh, you know, sparked off. And that helps you. Okay. Uh, sir, what do you think is the, like, what do you think is the quality of storytelling in India and uh, why why do you think it is like lacking behind or is it somewhere somewhere still you know in its nascent state because like uh, in India we don't get most like a big very, very big project like we don't get usually you know, like Disney type of thing. You're talking about Disney an animation context. Yes, no? uh, see stories are I think storytelling wise India is great. I think it has got one of the oldest tradition of storytelling. But it's a different form of storytelling. You know, if you look at Ramayana and Mahabharata, they're not really old. They're 5,000 years old. And it's been created by people, by just improvising on. Uh, as you keep narrating the story, somebody will take something, somebody will add something, somebody will add a different value, different angle. That's how it, it's been built, right? It's a, it's a simple storyline that got really populated and become like this huge two, I call them mangas of India, you know, there are two big mangas where um, people 
know each and every character, their behavior, everything. I mean, how, this is the value of storytelling, correct? And the folk stories, there are so many of them that, uh, you know, we are not every, any sm every small village has so many stories of their own. So we are great with our stories. It is just that in the area of animation, we are in a very early stage of creating, uh, you know, stories for animation and creating very effective films using animation. And that will, uh, your question was, how would it improve now? Yes, sir. How well, I think it, it will just happen by constantly doing the exercise. You have to keep trying to tell stories with animation more. And that's the only way it will improve, by making mistakes, by failing, by, you know, realizing what went wrong in, in, in one film, then you improve, improve on the other one. So you, it's a constant process of growth. And it has to be, there has to be an audience. That is a very important thing. So for you to develop pretty evolved subjects, um, like how they have done uh, in the Europe or in the, in the States, it will take that much amount of time. It took it took them some 70, 80 years. I mean, how old is Tom and It's 85 or something. So, you know, they have been living with it much earlier than us. It has, it has come to us. Probably it was around us, some of the people who studied at this institute, we had access to it, but the, the public didn't have access to it. So for it to grow as, and people started thinking of using animation as a storytelling medium and creating films, that was maybe last, not even 20 years, like serious storytelling, it's maybe like last 10 years. Because of digital um, digitalization where things are moving faster, it may not take as much as 85 years for it to grow, but it is definitely going to take time for more and more people to get interested. Today, you see, it was the number of people who are making films with animation are much more than what it used to be just five years ago. So, if people are getting, uh, you know, influenced. They want to make tell stories using animation, and it is it is increasing. So that I meant, you need to have a lot more films coming in and a lot more people watching it and that's how this whole ecosystem will grow and then I mean more people wanting to see animation will create a demand for more people who are telling the story with animation okay. with more demand for people who would want to tell stories with animation there will be requirement for more people in terms of talent technical skill everyone to join that bandwagon to support that sort of volume that we need to uh, cater to. Okay. So, in, in an overall sense, that is, it is going to take time like that. So, that ecosystem has to be built. So, people have to keep using this media. And, so, how did you, or like, how did you set up, how did you uh, put the foundation stone for Ecosaurus and Famous House of Animation? So, I think Famous House of Animation uh, was more of a challenge because way back in 1999, 98, 99, there was absolutely no demand for animation and there we started to build, uh, you know, creating content in animation without knowing whether there's a market or not, which is very foolish of us. So we we tried to uh, create Amar Sitra Dada's in animation. That was in 1998. So, um, and we, we assumed that, you know, if you create something, there will be a market, but there wasn't. So we failed and we kind of diverted our attention to sustain that studio because it was a good team that I was able to put together and I wanted to sustain it. So then we moved towards the direction of advertising and we started sustaining, using advertising and you know various channels like Channel V and TV etc. as our, our um, uh, you know, the places where we can showcase our work. So that's how we grew that enterprise. And where there we could manage to, you know, introduce new styles, new mediums, whatever we wanted, the way we wanted. We had the control to actually expose a lot of things that people hadn't seen till then. And that kind of created opportunities for a lot more people to come start and do what they really wanted to do with their speciality. Because people were not um, uh, close to new styles of animation, new mediums of animation anymore. This is I'm talking about the industry. 
as uh, people who uh, make films, we all are aware of these mediums. But to introduce them and make them make them popular, make them acceptable, was something that we were able to do these through these uh, sources. So, Famous House of Animation um, was in collaboration with Famous Studios, uh, and you know I was a partner. And eventually, mm, uh, I I started Studio Weeks Order, which was uh, slightly bigger canvas for me. It was handling uh, content. It was also supposed to handle a medium in a medium agnostic way, where we are not sticking just to animation, but we could handle any medium to tell stories. So that gave us a lot of uh, um, opportunity to handle bigger canvas work. And that that uh, was the whole idea behind setting it up in 2009. And so, like, how do you find any certain material animated? Like, uh, you've done Rajasthan Tour and Travels, uh, Sand Tourism Animation. Huh? Yes. So, like, uh, in that way, how do you find any material animated? Like, you can do animation out of anything. You've done Usha's animation also of stitching, embroidery, and everything. So, like, how do you do that? No, actually, appropriateness to the content. You know, what we are trying to talk about is the context that we are. I think medium and material choices completely depend on that. It is not something that I want to use a medium so I'll squeeze that uh, fancy into a storytelling. I mean, I would first look at the context, what is the requirement. The context, context can take such an experiment that I'm trying to pull off. So those are the dependencies that, that are there. So if there is, uh, for Usha sewing machine, it was very important to actually create textile products and embroidered products to be animated. And we thought that's a good idea to uh, bring those uh, intangible sort of ideas into, uh, you know, very possible uh, movements where people actually saw that, okay, you can actually create things out of this machine and, you know, uh, it would make a difference. So uh, it really worked in that context. For Rajasthan tourism, I thought, you know, it is, a, it is so, it is the only desert in our country, which has uh, Registan. And, you know, that is one way we thought it, we should be using that uniqueness of that place to tell the story of that. So then we ventured and figured out whether a sand animation would work or not. So it is always the context that guides us. Of the story, context of the story that guides us for a, for the choice of material and the medium rather than our own fancy. We are, we have a lot of such fancies. We want to do work with many things. So, but we keep keep that reserved for the next opportunity that is going to come up. Okay. And so, like, uh, well, you you said that we need a. Uh, in a in a in a in an interview, you said that we need original animated content. So, like, uh, what 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 should be in it? What's the most important element we need to create such an original animated content? I mean, what what I meant was stories that we can create. As you know, if we are if we are we are staying in this culture, Indian culture is something that we are very familiar with. Create content out of that. What we know what we know of, rather than trying to emulate someone else and trying to, uh, you know, think, you know, how things would work best in in the West or somewhere else. I mean, using your own local uh, nuances and local inspiration, create content. That's what I meant. You know, you need original content coming out of here. If that can cater to our people, then, you know, you have a market. You don't have to go out and look for selling your stuff. If you can make things that our people can appreciate, then you have a you have you don't you don't have to. Let's say it's a large population of our country. If they can, if today you can see they're they're completely addicted to TikTok, yes, because they feel it is a great product, right? I mean, they I mean anyone and everyone is on TikTok. How did they come up? It is not a. They don't have like a huge history. So if you can create the content in a consumable fashion where people can accept in our country, then we we shouldn't be able to crib and complain that you know we don't you know we can't we are not getting enough opportunities. So that that is what one needs to do with our innovation 
and uh, uh, you know, but we need to persuade. There's a certain amount of persuasion that we need to do uh, to make sure that you know local content is coming out in the open uh, and people get to access it. How do we create that? So there are several loose ends in this whole process. I mean, creating is not just the only solution. How to create? How to exhibit it? How to make sure that people get to consume it? How to make it at a cost that it is something that people can make make sure that it will reach the end user. All those things are important, right? You know, we cannot we cannot create a Mercedes and ask everybody in this country to use it. You know, you cannot you know it, it cannot be something that is consumed. Maybe a, uh, a a cycle is is a good thing, but a good cycle can be also given. So you know, you need to look at the the whole whole combination. If it is something that we are going to create create for mass consumption, there has to be a certain way. If it has to be created for a niche consumption, there is a separate sort of content. So, but we need to create content in all levels. That is what I was stressing upon. That you know, we need to we need to focus on that. When Japanese created uh, content for themselves, it was something that we all used to think. Like in in eighties, I'm telling you honestly, uh, when I used to look at anime, I used to get irritated. Because they had very limited frames, very limited animation. For me, animation, animated films mean meant Disney, very smooth, very nicely in between actions. But the story consumption with anime is completely different. So, but they made sure that it is first for themselves. They were not even dubbing into other languages. Today, anime is extremely popular in the U.S. and elsewhere and everywhere. But that is a byproduct. That is not an intended. Uh, when they made the products, it was only for local consumption. So same thing would happen with our content also. Like if we may, if we believe in something and make something for our, ourselves, I think it will be also consumable for others. So. Okay, and sir, so you've uh, you've visited our Kalotso Kalotso exhibition and artwork. So how did you like? How did you find them? Were they pleasing and everything? I think it was very very nice to see the people. Uh, really passionate about their work, and you know, there's, there's a lot of ownership that I could see in in the students and the mentors that you know this is something that we've done, something that we, we've done. So that that is an important thing. You sh only when you are passionate about what you're creating, will there be that spirit to create more? If if I create something and if I shy and say that oh that's maybe I've created, then there is a big problem. You know, it should be a, it should be something that one should be really proud about. That yeah, this is something that I created. But I I would like to know your opinion, but I think it is the best. That is something that one should always feel. You may get a perspective from the other person uh, because of his experience exposure. He may say that no, this is it could be better. But that is doesn't matter. I found that as a very very nice spirit amongst all of them, and uh, they were really passionate about things that they were doing, there were really interesting ex experiments were there, um, quite out of the box. Uh, for me, it's things that I didn't expect, which was which was a good thing. I didn't expect that, you know, many things that I found here would be something that the students would be doing as an exercise. So that was a pleasant surprise. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. So it was a pleasure to have you.